Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the TechSoup new member orientation and Q&A because we definitely want you to ask your questions and we hope that we have the right answers for you. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. You see some of my other team members. Before we get started, I'm just going to share with you how you can engage today. This is being recorded. You are going to get the recording along with the slides and um, if you have a question, we would love if you would type it in the Q&A section for us. I know many of you may type it in the chat. We'll be able to grab it from the chat as well. Uh, we will send the video recording with the slides within 48 hours. If you need the closed caption, please type on that CC button. And I'm going to move out of the way because I don't have much to do today. I'm going to pass this on to Nick, who's going to guide us into our webinar. Thank you guys for being here today. Hi, everybody. Um, and uh, it's great to see you all here. And, and before I get going, I just want to start with a with a thank you to all of you. Um, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and so are you. Um, and uh, we know that it takes a special amount of effort and engagement to run a nonprofit, to work at a nonprofit, um, and, and each of you has made an active choice to, to work in the nonprofit sector and, and do, do good work that supports our communities. And um, I want to say thank, thank you to each of you for, for making that decision and choosing to be part of the nonprofit uh, sector. Um, so today's panelists on the Welcome to TechSoup um, orientation. You've already met the wonderful Aretha Simons. My name is Nick Finn. Um, we also have Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett who are joining us today who will give you a, a little more detail on some of the ways that you can engage directly with TechSoup staff if you have questions. And now on to the meat of the new member orientation. And I'm going to start with um, a buzzword alert because, you know, sometimes here in a especially very tech heavy West Coast California culture, um, we can get wrapped up in a lot of tech buzzwords that, that may or may not make a lot of sense to the rest of the world sometimes. Some of them that are fairly common uh, for the nonprofit sector are these. First, digital transformation. You'll hear funders and grant makers talk about digital transformation. TechSoup talks about it as well. Um, really, in simple terms, it's the process of becoming a more tech-savvy nonprofit, of uh, you know, changing how you do your operations, how you deliver service, how you deliver on your mission, and leveraging the advantages of technology to do that. Um, another term you'll hear is civil society. Um, and this is an important one. Civil society is really the gathering of non-government organizations that are nonprofits and NGOs um, around the world. Um, and they form the core of folks who are trying to really change communities and change the world for better. Um, but it's, yeah, it's non-governmental people and organizations. And, and it's not so much big business as it is um, the, uh, the nonprofits. Um, and then finally, we do hear talk a lot about cloud adoption. Frankly, this term has been around for some time now uh, for smaller nonprofits, though really what we're talking about is just using more modern web-based tools. So as you go through the process of digital transformation, um, part of it in the modern world now is, is really understanding that these cloud-based tools, for instance, Office 365 from Microsoft, right, where you have servers in the cloud um, and they are providing you with access to the, to the data and the platforms that you need to use. So cloud adoption is just using those modern web-based tools. Okay, what is TechSoup? Even though you're a new member or maybe considering becoming a new member, um, it's always helpful to understand more detail about exactly what is TechSoup? What do we do? Why are we here? Why should you care? How can we help you? Um, so first of all, as I've already said, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States, and we're also part of a global network. We work with other big nonprofits around the world um, to support NGOs and nonprofits in almost, almost every country around the world. Um, and uh, But here in the United States, and that's primarily um, the folks that we have on the line today on Zoom with us, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. And this is important. 
um, because it means that we actually really understand deeply what it means to function as a nonprofit, how to operate, how the budgeting decisions are made, what it means to have to raise money all the time to fund your programmatic activities. Um, and so we serve nonprofits exclusively, and we really understand them well because we are one ourselves. Um, our mission really is to support nonprofits as they work with technology to help build a more equitable planet. Um, and I want to draw quick attention to that notion of an equitable planet. Um, we really are committed to the goals of making a better world for everybody. Um, so no matter your race, gender, economic background, what country you're from, um, these are things that we believe uh, need attention from the nonprofit movement, and um, they need to be a global effort, not just isolated in one country. Um, at the very practical level, we host a catalog on TechSoup.org of affordable technology products from a lot of major technology brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. Um, if you have not yet looked at the catalog on TechSoup.org, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes here. Um, but uh, the, the partnerships that we build with these technology companies include us negotiating on behalf of nonprofits to get the best pricing possible for nonprofits, um, because we know that one of the big blockers to using tech as a nonprofit is that it's really expensive sometimes. Um, and so uh, providing access to tech, to usable tech, means that we also try to work on helping nonprofits afford it. Um, we also know, having been in the industry for a long time now, that it's not enough for nonprofits to adopt a new platform and pay money and get it. That that's really when the work begins. Um, because once you have brought in a new piece of software or hardware, frankly, um, there's a whole back end that comes with that of needing to, you know, install it, manage it, administer it, troubleshoot it, help staff adopt it. There's training and education that has to go with some of these platforms. So it's not enough to simply provide access to a technology product. We also support nonprofits by helping them understand how to use it and how to administer it and configure it. Um, a lot of that happens in the in the courses and trainings sector of TechSoup, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Um, but um, we provide very specific training on some of these platforms to help nonprofit staff get up to speed uh, and be able to use it. Um, and then finally, like uh, most of you, we also have our own grant-based programming um, and, and in our case, what we deliver on is strengthening global civil society through the use of technology. So, you know, we, we have a team of development folks, just like you probably do, um, or at least a development person um, who's writing grant applications um, and putting together proposals for work that TechSoup can do. All right, so already you can see that TechSoup is a complex thing. Uh, we've got six different areas here where we try to help nonprofits in the U.S. and around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, let's get into a little more detail about what those things look like. I'm going to start with the TechSoup.org product catalog, where I was saying we have these offers for major brands, stuff that we've negotiated on behalf of nonprofits to give you as best pricing as we can. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with how do you get to the product catalog? I don't want to assume that people know automatically how the website is working, but as you see here on the screen, I've got the homepage of ts.org up or techsoup.org. Um, there are two main links there that can really help you get to the product catalog. There's one in the top navigation circled in red there. And then there's the orange button right in the middle of the screen there, right? So those will both take you straight to the TechSoup product catalog. Let's talk about what we find in that product catalog. Well, speaking of high-end partners that we've worked with for a long time, we do provide access to some really strong offers from Microsoft. And, uh, you know, at the top of that really is Microsoft 365 or Office 365. 
this is the cloud-based version of Microsoft Office. Um, depending on how long you've been in the workforce, you may remember back 10, 20 years when you would receive compact disks of Microsoft software and Microsoft Office, um, and you would have to install that on each computer yourself. Well, of course, in the modern world, as I was saying, back to that term, cloud adoption, um, we now just have the cloud version of Office where there's no CDs or anything like that that you need to use to install it. You're just downloading it straight through the internet onto the local computer that you're working with. Um, so uh, TechSoup is a certified Microsoft partner for Office 365. Um, and we also provide support services to help nonprofits, again, install, support, and implement Office 365 in, uh, you know, in a helpful way so that you can use it properly. Um, we do also have access to the older versions of Microsoft Office, which are called on-premises. And on-premises is where you're just installing it on one computer. There's a limited number of updates you get. And at a certain point, you know, Microsoft stops providing updates for that specific version. And over time, you'll find that it, you know, decays a little bit and you probably want to upgrade to whatever the next version is. Um, and there's an option on software assurance. Software assurance is something that you can get with Microsoft Office that kind of gives you some upgrade um, capabilities, or you can get it without software assurance. Um, we also provide access to the Windows Pro full operating system, which means right now Windows 11, right? Um, and you can get access to that through TechSoup as well. Um, and uh, that includes upgrades from Windows 10, assuming that the computer you're looking to upgrade meets the technical specifications. Um, I certainly have two different computers at home myself. One does meet those specs and runs Windows 11. One does not meet those specs and is still running Windows 10. But these Microsoft products are available through TechSoup. Um, and I have to say they are something that the vast majority of nonprofits that we already work with take advantage of. Another major brand in the catalog that we have partnered with for a long time and who've been really solid supporters of nonprofits is Adobe. Um, as a communications professional coming up in the industry for the last 20 years, uh, I started using Adobe very early on and have watched the arc of that company's growth and what they have contributed and really built as kind of the modern technology version of basic design and um, production tools for print and for digital output. Um, you know, Adobe invented the PDF, the portable document format. Um, and today they provide all sorts of software that help people engaged in building visual design on any platform. Um, one of the biggest ones that nonprofits come to us for is Creative Cloud. Creative Cloud is, I think, arguably the choice of design professionals around the world at this point in time. Um, it has the programs in it that you may know by name, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, and, and many, many others. Um, these are really very, very capable, complex pieces of software that you use to design. Um, and, I, and when I say design professionals use it, it, it does require some training to use Creative Cloud. You can't just jump in there um, and immediately start producing, you know, world-class visual presentations. Um, it takes some work to understand how to use Creative Cloud and to be a trained designer as well. Um, Another product that we provide access to is Acrobat Pro DC. Um, this is the choice, you know, the top end choice if you are needing to publish, manipulate, or edit PDF files, right? Um, PDFs, again, portable document format that Adobe itself created, but we all work with PDFs these days in our daily work. Um, and uh, Acrobat Pro DC is one of the best ways to be able to manipulate those PDFs. And then finally, if you're not a formally trained designer who knows the ins and outs of Creative Cloud and you need something that's a little simpler and more streamlined, um, uh, TechSoup's pretty excited now to be offering access to Adobe Express, which is a new offer Adobe uh, provided to TechSoup and nonprofits late last year. 
Um, Adobe Express has similar design tools and publishing tools as Creative Cloud, but it's a simpler version. There are a lot of templates in Adobe Express, um, and it's really intended to help folks who may not be professional level designers with that level of training. Um, they can give a crack at Adobe Express and use templates and, and produce still pretty great graphics and support materials for their nonprofit. Another really popular brand of products that we provide access to is Intuit QuickBooks. Um, and here we're switching obviously out of operating systems like Microsoft and out of graphic design like Adobe. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is all about how you can track and control your nonprofit finances. Um, and this is a great opportunity to bring back that issue of digital transformation um, because it was a real surprise um, for us when the pandemic hit in 2020 how many nonprofits were actually still relying on some paper and pencil accounting systems um, to keep their books balanced, even if it was only partial, suddenly with everybody working at home and requiring isolation from each other, uh, it was not possible to go into the office and work with these paper and pencil accounting systems. Um, and it was a real reminder to everybody that a digitally savvy nonprofit needs to be using some kind of digital system for tracking its finances. And Adobe, and uh, not Adobe, Intuit QuickBooks um, has by far been the most popular choice at TechSoup for nonprofits on that. And of course, we do provide support for uh, migrating the data into QuickBooks if you need help with that. Um, and we do have some educational content to help nonprofits who need to learn more about how to use QuickBooks. Um, QuickBooks Online is really the version that is most popular at this point. Um, and I think there is an advanced version of it that is also available through TechSoup. Um, you'll get a copy of this presentation in a follow-up email in a day or two, um, and a call out that's, that these links in the, in the presentation are all active, and you are able to click on them and get to uh, various TechSoup properties, um, and that includes this online FAQ for QuickBooks that you, you may want to check out if you're interested in Intuit QuickBooks. There are many, many other partners that TechSoup works with in the product catalog. Um, I just share here on the screen several of the other major brands. Um, and uh, all of these are, again, talking with TechSoup and trying to do the best they can to offer, you know, affordable solutions to nonprofits. Um, there is more than software in this catalog. In fact, TechSoup has been a real pioneer in providing access to some specific hardware to nonprofits. Um, broadly, of course, we're talking about laptops, desktops, servers, networking, internet hotspots, headsets, and, and each year there's a new uh, piece of hardware that becomes available through TechSoup. Um, but I want to talk about a couple of them. So we have great relationships with Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Um, where you can, nonprofits can purchase product from all three of those brands through a TechSoup offer um, at significant savings. Those are all new machines. Um, and Journey Ed is another popular hardware option through TechSoup. Um, the one I really want to call out, though, because I'm proud of it at TechSoup, is the refurbished hardware program. Um, so early on in the computer revolution, it became clear that there were some catastrophic consequences of simply throwing out old computers all the time. And the amount of digital waste starting to build up in landfills and companies that were trying to process that stuff was fairly daunting. There was significant thinking going on that some of these computers are still completely usable and they just need to be refurbished and they could be used elsewhere. And so TechSoup has been a leader uh, in supporting nonprofits with access to refurbished hardware. We work with numerous vendors um, to bring laptops, desktops, and other pieces of hardware up to spec or to verify that they are still at current spec and then provide them to nonprofits at a price point, which definitely beats most new hardware. Um, and during the time of the pandemic, again, where we had major issues with uh, supply chain and skyrocketing pricing on new stuff. Um, that refurbished hardware program was extremely helpful to thousands of nonprofits and it continues to grow. 
Um, so I want to call that out for folks here as well. Um, finding the hardware section on our site is a little tricky. I'm working on it, but to call out for you how you do that, once you go to the product catalog page, remember that I showed at the beginning of the presentation, then on the left-hand side, you can navigate by donor or company. You can look at category or there's the tab to the hardware page right there. Okay, so that's an example of some of the pure product orientation we have in the TechSoup catalog for nonprofits and NGOs. But as I was saying at the front end of this, TechSoup also recognizes that there's much more to tech than simply buying stuff. Just having a new platform or new software or new hardware it doesn't mean that it's solving any problems for you. And in fact, frankly, at the beginning of that, process when you've got the new thing, there's a real bump you have to go through learning how to properly implement that platform or, or set up that hardware, how to make sure that staff are actually using it in the way that you intended, learning how they need some training or guidance on some of this tech, um, and then managing and administering and troubleshooting these platforms over time. So, TechSoup has worked over the years now to provide, and we continue to build new ones, a series of services that we offer nonprofits to help you in the management of these technology products. So first, as I've done already a few times now, here's how you find those offers in the TechSoup navigation. It's that second tab, the services tab. Some of the hard examples here we're going to talk about include the digital assessment tool, there's help desk, there's an Office 365 service, a managed IT service, um, website services and digital marketing for nonprofits, TechSoup courses, which we'll talk about some more, and then uh, Boost and Consultant Connection. So let's talk first about some services to really support the folks who are doing the technology work in nonprofits. We have a help desk service, $35 monthly or 350 annually for unlimited support on one device. So there's one tricky thing you've got in the office that you consistently need help with that help desk service can help. I'll try not to say help again for at least a minute. Um, we also have the Office 365 email and data migration service. So as I was saying, if you get Office 365 through TechSoup, and that's important because you can get Office 365 elsewhere, but if you get it through TechSoup, we can also support you with the migration of data, uh, with the migration of the emails out of an old system like that. Super helpful service for thousands of nonprofits. Um, we also have remote office standard or pro installation report support, and that's if you're using the older version of office, that's the on-premises version. We offer something called managed IT, which is sort of like the larger version of help desk. Managed IT is really where you're working with TechSoup to manage all of your technology uh, at, the, at your nonprofit. Um, and it's a holistic approach. Um, where we're helping you really spec out um, what you need to do, the schedules for maintenance on some of this stuff, how to continue administering and troubleshooting it over time. Um, I mentioned that digital assessment tool in the navigation that we saw. This is a, an interesting tool that can help nonprofit staff see more clearly where there's room for growth in how their nonprofit is using technology. And I don't just mean growth in getting more of something. I mean growth in terms of making the nonprofit more sophisticated, more able to respond to situations, more resilient. Um, the digital assessment tool covers several different topical areas that all nonprofits really have to think about and walks you through a series of questions that you can answer within the tool that help you understand, you know, is your finance and accounting technology stack where it needs to be? Does it need some help? Or is it fine and you should be looking at another part of your operations, for instance, a CRM or something? So check out that digital assessment tool. There's some cool advice in there. Um, one of the primary one of the primary things technology does for nonprofits is help us communicate. 
you think about email marketing or just emails, you think about a platform like Slack, think about the website that your nonprofit probably runs, think about text messaging. Um, all these are just ways that we actually communicate human being to human being. And technology is giving us lots of different channels to do that communication in. And we've certainly recognized that that is something that nonprofits need help with. So we, we continue to build out a suite of website and digital marketing services for nonprofits. Um, and this includes the capacity to actually help you revamp or rebuild your website if that's what you need. Now, I'm going to be completely upfront about it. Most folks really underestimate the cost and work that's going to go with that. Um, if you are thinking about redoing your website, um, a really important first step is to be very realistic with yourself about what you have available in your budget to support that effort um, and what kind of time frame you're on. Nevertheless, plenty of nonprofits know this is a priority and they've budgeted accordingly. And TechSoup does have services to help support you in the process of understanding what you should do about your website and then to help you rebuild it if that's something that you want to do. Um, we also understand, you know, websites are the thing that you put up and people come and read what you have to say on your site. There's also an element of communication where you are reaching out to supporters, maybe clients or folks that you serve, maybe members of the media, who knows. Um, but these are digital marketing services, which help nonprofits with the outreach portion of their communications. Um, and uh, those are a new set of services that TechSoup has been working on for the past two years. Very helpful. Um, if you're a nonprofit that uses Google Ad Grants, you may have noticed that it's really difficult to hit the $10,000 monthly cap that those Google Ad Grants provide you with. If you're not already using Google Ad Grants, you should check them out. They are a monthly stipend that Google offers to nonprofits. Um, sorry, it's not really a stipend. It's a grant that Google offers to nonprofits where you can advertise in their search platform. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a limit on the dollar amount that you can bid on those ads. Um, but if you're using Google Ad Grants already and you're having trouble figuring out the best way to configure it, that is also a service that we're now providing and we can work with you to help on the ad grants. Um, we have new services coming as well that are of interest that I'll call out here for you. Um, if you have a website already that's well established and you are most likely already using Google Analytics on your website to at least track basic information like the traffic to and from the site, right? Um, if you're doing that, you probably already know that in July of this year, um, Google Analytics is undergoing a pretty major change. It is evolving to the next version of Google Analytics. Um, and uh, lots of nonprofits are still struggling with how to make that transition because it does require changing the code on your site. And it also requires figuring out where you're going to store the legacy data from the old Google Analytics that you were using. Um, if this is too technical for you, don't worry about it. But if this is something your nonprofit is struggling with, know that TechSoup's about to launch a Google Analytics migration service. Um, and we'll be talking about that very, very soon in email. Um, we're also launching soon a domain registration service. Um, domain registration is the process of like, what would your website address be? So for instance, techsoup.org is what we are in the United States. Um, but lots of nonprofits are launched by folks who have incredible capacity to help the world. They may not have the digital skills to set up the domain that they need for their website, and they may have a hard time figuring out instantly who to go to on that. TechSoup can help. Okay. One of the earlier things I mentioned was that there's often a need within nonprofits to educate staff and leadership on how to use new technology platforms um, and, or you know, existing programs that you're already using. By far, the most popular example of this that I always lean on is Excel. What an incredibly powerful tool Excel is. 
so powerful and so deep that I never, never always know exactly what all the bells and whistles in that program are. So uh, TechSoup has a course on Excel. In fact, we have a few um, to help folks really get the most out of it. But that's just one example. You find the courses in the TechSoup courses drop down there under services, right? Let's talk a little bit about what's available in that courses platform. Um, they're available, well, first of all, they're available to nonprofits and, you know, most libraries are nonprofits as well. So we include that specifically in the call out here. Um, this is what the courses site looks like. It is a separate site from TechSoup.org, by the way. You will need to set up a separate login to access TechSoup courses. Um, over 70,000 learners have accessed more than 200 of our courses so far. Um, we have courses available both in English and in Spanish. All these courses are designed specifically for nonprofits. Again, going back to that earlier point, the TechSoup as a 501c3, we really understand how it's different to be a nonprofit than just a small business. Anyone can sign up for these TechSoup courses. So that means anybody on your staff or volunteers as well. Um, I've already mentioned the Excel. Uh, there's many other topical areas, managing data, CRM, which is the customer relationship management database, cybersecurity, much more. Um, and then one of the standout features of our TechSoup courses platform is the Microsoft Digital Skills Center. Uh, we've worked with Microsoft for some years now to provide a set of courses and education to help folks be able to really use the products from Microsoft that they have access to through TechSoup. Um, one of the great, uh, one of the great offers through the courses platform is the nonprofit foundational skills track. Sorry, back, hit the back button there by accident. Um, and as you look at the names of these courses, what you'll see here is that they cover several different topical areas that matter to nonprofits, um, anywhere from project management to Excel, organizing your remote team, fundraising, grant writing, email marketing itself, Google ad grants, which I mentioned earlier, overall tech planning, which is very much about how should your IT infrastructure work, um, and cybersecurity. You know, it's critical that nonprofits do an excellent job of being secure, of protecting their data. Your donors require it. In many cases, if you're serving customers or clients, the government requires it. Um, and so the security offers through TechSoup and this educational opportunity are really great. Um, so with that dizzying overview <laughs> of the many things available through TechSoup for nonprofits, I'm going to pause here and now introduce a couple of my colleagues um, to talk about a couple of specific ways that nonprofits can engage with TechSoup when you have questions, right? And I want to frame this first. Uh, the first person who's going to present is Kevin Mulhall from the customer success team, and then Kelly Garrett from the client services team. They're both wonderful people. I've worked with them for years, and I'm really grateful that they can be on these webinars with us. Um, the customer success team is here to help you really make the products and platforms you get through TechSoup work, right? They're here to help you with the things you got from us. Kelly's team, on the other hand, client services, they are here to help you manage your relationship with TechSoup itself. So one is very product. The other is how do you work with TechSoup itself? So hopefully that'll keep those two ideas separate. And so, Kevin, I'm going to ask you to step forward here. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Again, my name is Kevin Mulhall, and I'm a Senior Technical Customer Success Manager here at TechSoup. Uh, Nick did an absolutely dynamite job explaining what customer success is, uh, though I do kind of have a slide uh, at the end to kind of reiterate that, but that summarizes uh, our team up in a nutshell. Um, wanted to see, um, Aretha, I'm not, do we still have the poll available to queue up? Perfect. Um, I'd like to start with a quick poll question. Uh, is your organization currently using Microsoft or Office 365? There's, of course, no obligation to answer, 
Uh, we'll give it about a uh, half a minute to fuel the results. Very excited to see what they're going to be this time. Okay, very good. 78% it looks like. Uh, very interesting. Um, kind of bounced around between the 90s uh, and then the 80s. And I see that we're uh, kind of even looking like we're trending down a little bit. So this this should be good then. Okay. Uh, for those of you not currently using 365 or maybe not fully aware of what the platform is, Microsoft 365 is or 365 is Microsoft's Software as a Service Solution or SaaS. 365 core licensing for all intents and purposes comes in two general versions, Microsoft 365 Business or Enterprise. In the case of business, this would include Business Basic, Business Standard, and Business Premium. In the case of Enterprise, this would include Enterprise E3 and E5. And Office 365 Enterprise, E1, E3, and E5. The two versions exist as either web-based or hybrid licenses. Web-based, as the name implies, provides access only to the web versions of the various applications, such as Word for the web, Excel for the web, etc. Hybrid licensing, on the other hand, provides web-based access as well as a desktop application entitlement providing you the full version of Office. With over 150 different charity subscription SKUs, there literally isn't a programmatic service or function that a 365 license can't address. If you're ready to begin the journey toward accessing Microsoft Cloud solutions for your organization, there's a three-step process. First, you'll need to create an account at the Microsoft nonprofit portal, nonprofit.microsoft.com. Next, your account will need to be validated. Our validation services team provides support for this for Microsoft in the back end, and it typically takes five to seven business days to process this. The final part will be introducing what we refer to here at TechSoup as the cloud manager tool to an authorized individual account. This CSP introducing will allow you to access the storefront where you can purchase 365 licensing. If you find yourself stuck in any part of the process, we do have a team at the Ready to assist via chat as shown in the bottom right corner. Next slide, please. Understanding a move to the cloud can be a challenge for organizations. We offer a free consultation service. During your session with us, we'll be able to assist with registration, choosing the appropriate subscription licensing, provide recommendations for services and courses, license implementation, and ongoing support to you at no cost. Next slide, please. So as promised, uh, I wanted to give you all a quick overview of what my team does. For the sake of time, I've broken this down into five general areas. The first, technology review and planning. So as to Nick's point earlier, our focus is on both recognizing the applications that your organization would benefit from, as well as working to strategically plan the onboarding and adoption of those products. Organizational strategy, things like life cycle management, particularly as it pertains to the onboarding of IT technologies and your organization. Adoption of technology is one part of the process. Buy-in is the other when it comes to internal buy-in, that is. Identifying opportunities for potential financial and volunteer supports. We understand that some of these technologies are not inexpensive. We also understand that organizations and oftentimes working on very tight budgets. Our goal is to find the best solution for you, not what we think necessarily is the best solution to push. We are your advocates here at TechSoup, and our goal is to get you into the right sized product at the right price. Triaging managed support projects and services. As it was shown earlier, we do work with managed service providing partners. We understand we're not the only organization in the game, so to speak. 
That said, it's very important for us that our customers are getting the best value for the services that are being done for them. And to that effect, our team is happy to review both scopes of work and to help with the generation of requests for proposals. It does not need to be something that's handled or managed internally with TechSoup. We understand that some organizations want relationships locally with managed providers. Our goal is to make sure that you are being advocated for in that process. The last point, providing quotes and invoices for bulk product requests. Understanding that the purchasing process from different organizations functions differently. We understand that it's important that accounts payable, chief financial officers, and other decision makers are able to see what the product is and what the product costs. Our team is happy to perform that process for you. So, and with that, uh, I am going to hand it back over uh, to Nick. Great, thanks, Kevin. Um, and so uh, now we move to our next uh, esteemed guest, Kelly Garrett from uh, Client Services. Um, and as I said, Client Services is really here to help nonprofits manage their relationship with TechSoup directly. Um, and uh, Kelly, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Garrett, the Associate Manager for Client Services, as Nick introduced me. Um, I've been here with TechSoup for several years now and work with the client services team that provides the customer service. Um, when you contact us by phone or by chat, that's who you're talking to is client services. Um, we strive very hard to be there for our members and make sure that we're assisting them as best we can. Um, you will always be speaking to a live person, so phone or chat. It is a real person you're talking to. Um, we don't have any AI set up or anything like that, so if you're ever reaching out and talking to us, you can keep in mind you're talking to somebody and it's not an AI bot or anything like that. Perfect. Uh, Nick, next slide, please. Perfect. So client services can answer lots of questions. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that we are a relatively small team that can sometimes get backlogged um, with communications. We're experiencing that right now. We're having long hold times for our phones and chat support, and it's taking us a little bit longer than usual to get to reviewing um, newly registered organizations for qualification, aka validation. Um, so, you know, we always request, please be patient with us. If you have anything urgent, give us a call, use the live chat, and um, we'll get back, we'll work with you um, as quickly as we can and get to you as quickly as we can. While you're um, thinking about requesting products, you're thinking, mm, maybe I need to contact customer, the cu customer service, which is client services. I always recommend that our members check out the product page or the offer page on www.techsoup.org. Um, basically, what you can do is, as Nick showed earlier, go to the product catalog page, kind of look by category or look by donor partner, or use our little magnifying glass to search for a particular product um, that is located up in the right hand corner next to join. And once you find the product that you're interested in or the service, that's when you want to click on it to open the product page. Um, product pages have as much information as possible to cover all questions um, that members have. Um, it's also got important information that our partners want us to, uh, to relate. So QuickBooks Online's here. The partner is Intuit, who creates and owns the product and is donating it through TechSoup. Um, on the product page, there's always going to be three tabs of information that you'll see highlighted here with this red box. On the left side is description. On the right side is the rules eligibility, or sorry, description is on the left side. On the right side is rules, eligibility, and restrictions. Those are always labeled like that. The middle tab can sometimes uh, be labeled differently. Sometimes we'll have subscription details. Sometimes we'll have system requirements. Depends on what the product is. Um, so always recommend going here, really thoroughly reading through all three tabs of information. Um, since most of our products and services have a no, they, it has a no refund, no exchange policy. Um, it's something that we really encourage you to make sure you're reading through everything and don't just add it to your cart and check out and then go back and look. Um, at that point, you might be unable to uh, cancel the request in your My Account, which you do have a cancel option underneath request history. Um, or, you know, requesting a refund might not be available at that time. So something to think about. Um, one thing I do like to call out is if this product does not have it in the name, 
But if you ever see a product that says access to discounted rates in the name of the product, that's going to mean that you're going to pay TechSoup's admin fee. It's always listed in red here. And then you'll pay the partner uh, an additional fee that's discounted compared to their usual retail rate. A good example of that is Zoom. Zoom offers a 50% discount for their Zoom One um, Pro or business products. Um, you pay TechSoup an $18 admin fee for which facilitates us checking your eligibility, confirming everything's good to go, generating the code for you, and then sending it to you. And from there, you do go to Zoom's website, apply the coupon code, and that gives you the 50% discount. So always like to throw that out there. Access to discounted rates means you're paying two things. If you don't see that in the title and you don't see anything mentioned in the description about paying the partner, then it's going to be just a straight admin fee to TechSoup. Like QuickBooks Online here, the renewal every year is paid to TechSoup, and it's currently $75, which you can see here on the product page in red. Perfect. Uh, next slide, please. Another great place to get uh, help from um, or get support information from without having to, you know, wait on the phone or wait on chats for us to get in contact with you um, is going and clicking the help option in the top right corner of the page. Um, it's next to the login button, or if you're logged in already, it'll be next to the circle icon that has like a, a person outlined in it. So if we click on that help, um, you will be taken to our new TechSoup support page. Um, we recently updated it from our FAQ page that we previously had. A lot more in depth, a lot easier to search stuff. We're very excited about it, and we're con we're continuing to expand it with more product information and things like that. So, really great place to start off. And if the product page isn't answering your questions, check out our help pay our TechSoup support page through this help button. Uh, next slide, please. Once you click on that help button, you'll be redirected to TechSoup support. There, you have a search feature, and you also have caught like a common question headers that um, lead you to additional support um, articles. So a lot of stuff is answered in here. How do I update my account information? I don't want this person representing my organization anymore. How do I replace them or invite someone new? Um, how do I change my email address? All this stuff, it has instructions right here and usually links you to the right place in your My Account area, which is where your fulfillment emails are stored, your organization details, your personal member information, things along those lines. So great places to go here. And then always double check in your My Account to see if there's anything listed there that you can um, that you're looking to access. Uh, next slide, please. So as I I've mentioned a couple of times, we have phone and live chat support. Live chat support is the one is open from Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are located on the West Coast. Um, so we are based on Pacific Standard Time. So um, and on a later slide, I have that listed there, too. Um, but you'll also see here on our Contact Us page, we do have the phone number listed and we do have the live chat hours listed. So all that information is listed for you right there. Um, phones are only open from Monday through Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So chat's usually the thing that's going to be available to you. And it's on pretty much every single web page of www.techsoup.org. You're going to see a help bubble at the bottom right corner here. And that's what you're going to click to access the live chat. Uh, next slide, please. Um, oh, it looks like I'm missing that there's a slide missing here. Um, you go back one, Nick, just to see. It's blank. The previous one's blank. Oh, um, it should have a slide. Okay, well, basically the slide I was trying to show you um, was a when you click on the help bubble, a window will pop up. And it will have a thing that it has um, the top suggestions listed to, to connect you to TechSoup support. See if you have an answer right there, nice and easy. Otherwise, in the bottom right corner of that pop-up window, it says live chat. And you click on that to enter the chat queue. And you'll wait someone to um, join the chat from our team. And then they'll start assisting you. 
Um, again, we are experiencing pretty long delays right now. Um, sometimes it's been one to two hours to get through to someone on the phones or the chats. It's something we're diligently working on to reduce those wait times. And we are very sorry for the wait times, but um, we're doing the best we can and we hope to be sped up sooner than later. But for right now, just anticipate if you got to contact us, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, on here again, mentioning the chat support is 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, that's where you click the help button in the live chat. Uh, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Wednesday for phone support. And the phone number is listed there and also on our contact us page. Um, chat is going to be a little bit faster than phone support. So I do recommend going there instead of phones, but either option is available to you um, during these times and these days. Uh, last thing I like to comment, uh, touch on is when contacting TechSoup, something to keep in mind is that uh, client services is basic customer support. Um, we can help you with your account management. We can answer questions about eligibility since no one organization is going to be eligible for every nonprofit program on our website. There is a eligibility quiz you can take to double check what you're eligible for. Um, and, you know, navigating the resources on our website, we can assist with as well. Uh, we have too many partners to be product support trained um, fully. We can answer some basic common questions. We can point you in the right direction for resources. But a lot of times we're going to probably point you in the direction of the partner that created the product. So you need support figuring out how to upload reports in your QuickBooks online. That's going to be Intuit support that assists you. Um, same thing with IT support. We're not trained for that. That's why we have the wonderful TechSoup services that have a lot of different types of IT support available to you. We have Microsoft specific support, um, Google ad specific support, the website specific support. So I highly recommend going and checking out TechSoup services underneath in the program uh, or product catalog. If you go down to the T section for donors, you'll see TechSoup services and you can click on that and that will list all of the services that we currently have available that should cover any IT support needs that your organization has. Um, same with in-depth product functionality questions. A lot of times we're going to be sending you back to the partner to double check. Our pro products and services being offered are not new products that aren't offered anywhere else. It's the same product available on the retail market. They've just either donated or discounted it for the tech, for TechSoup members. So the product functionality, product support, all of that stuff, they're pro they're, um, the partner's support team is going to be able to answer those questions and provide that support um, better than TechSoup client services. So just something to keep in mind um, if you need any support at any point is what am I looking for and which team to go to? Um, and I did see one last question in the chat that was asking about um, tokens and discount codes. Highly recommend that if you're getting something with a discount code, a coupon code, make sure that you're requesting the product around when you want to start that subscription. For example, Zoom, you're going to renew your eligibility every year with TechSoup, and that's one renewal date. If you wait three months to start your Zoom account, your coupon code could be expired. And also you then have a weird three month gap between when you're renewing with TechSoup to get a new coupon code to renew your discount versus Zoom subscription renewal where you're just renewing the discounted subscription with them. So always recommend place the request, get the request, and start the subscription as close together as you can. Uh, validation tokens, which is used to validate your eligibility on different partners' um, websites, such as Google for nonprofits, my, Google for nonprofits, there's like HubSpot, Slack, a couple other things. You will, you can regenerate as many validation tokens as you need. They're good for 60 days, but once they expire, you can just go in and redo, regenerate uh, it. And validation tokens can be accessed in your My Account. It is up in, um, it's on the right-hand side of your My Account page. It says validation tokens. You click on that and it will take you to the FAQ, which has links to the different partners that require um, validation tokens where you can create it yourself. It's not something we send to you. You create it on our website. And uh, that's all I've got for today. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly. And thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Aretha. And again, thank you, everybody who attended today's webinar. Um, I just want to go back to what I opened with, which is, you know, each of you has made a choice to be part of the nonprofit sector to do work 
that uplifts our communities and helps um, helps everybody. And I really appreciate that you've made that choice. And you know, the folks who work at TechSoup have made the same choice. We want to help you do your work and uh, accomplish your mission. So um, I know we went deep into a lot of elements today um, and, and maybe not all of it stuck. And you know what, that's okay. Uh, I hope that the highlights that really mattered to you most do stick out for you. Um, and as I said, we'll be sharing this presentation with you in email within a day or two here. There are lots of live links in it that you can use to reach specific TechSoup properties that you're interested in. Um, and uh, thank you again for attending today to, to for attending today's webinar. Um, I'm obviously a little tongue-tied having talked too much for the past hour. Um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. And uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.